Hi everybody, this is Katya Eckhart. Welcome to my YouTube video channel this evening. I'm wearing my Michael Kors uh, silver dress with matching silver clutch purse, my black high heels, and new pantyhose. So I wanted to dress things up a little this evening uh, and uh, make it a little more formal because uh, this evening I want to look like a silver bullet. The reason I want to look about uh, look like a silver bullet is that I would like to indulge uh, a little bit more in my own theological eccentricity and go back to one of the things that I was talking about uh, over the last few videos and that has to do with the possible relevance of uh, the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche for contemporary theology. And what I want to do this evening is give you a very specific example of the kind of abuse that I see sometimes that's made uh, of Nietzsche's philosophy by theologians. I'm a theologian, and I do think that Nietzsche can be useful for the theological enterprise, but I also think that we have to be very careful in how we utilize uh, this Nietzschean tool. And what I want to do tonight is give a very brief example of someone who attempts to use Nietzsche as a benefit for theology and helping theology to remove certain problematic conceptions, but winds up making a mess of the whole thing. So a subtitle for this video could be The Bitch is Back because I'm going to be a little bit bitchy about it, but I think it's necessary in order to make the point that I think needs to be made here. So let me begin by mentioning the name of the person uh, that I'm going to discuss this evening. Uh, it's a theologian by the name of Craig Hovey, H-O-V-E-Y, and C-R-A-I-G, Craig Hovey. And uh, recently he wrote a book called Nietzsche and Theology, uh, which you can, if you're interested, you can Google it, you can go onto Amazon.com and you can find uh, the link to that book. So what I want to talk about tonight is a particular uh, Nietzschean critique that Hovey brings up in connection with the Christian ritual of the Eucharist or Holy Communion. And so the critique has to do with the notion of what in Catholicism is known as transubstantiation. So this is the belief that during the Eucharistic celebration, the bread and the wine are transformed into the body and blood of Christ. The appearances, the sense, uh, the sense experiences of bread and wine um, remain. I mean, it still looks like bread and it still looks like wine, but actually the substance, as it's known, uh, underlying those appearances changes from bread and wine into the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ, into the body of Christ, let's say. So that's the notion of transubstantiation. And in a very famous formulation that goes back to St. Thomas Aquinas, the, the, the various acts in the ritual are, are signs of what they cause. And so when the host is elevated and the priest intones the right words, uh, all of those actions all of those ritualistic acts are signs or signifiers of something that's being caused, namely this real transformation of the substance of um, bread and wine into the substance of Christ's body. So that's the notion of transubstantiation. And Hovey discusses this at one point at some length in his book. Now he notices that Nietzsche would be very critical of this picture because the notion of transubstantiation presupposes a very strong distinction between substance and accidents. The accidents are the things that we can perceive, so that's what looks like bread, like the wafer of bread or the drink of wine. Those are the accidents that we can perceive, but then underlying that is the substance, which initially is the substance of bread and wine, and then through transubstantiation, becomes the substance of uh, the body and blood of Christ. So Nietzsche is very critical of this distinction between uh, substance and accident, and especially the idea that uh, we can perceive the accidents, but we can't perceive the substance. The substance is something that's imperceptible that underlies the accidents and that can change without our seeing the change. All we can see 
are the appearances of bread and wine, those are the accidents. So let's say that Nietzsche rejects that, and he wants to uphold the importance of Zimmischkeit in German, that's our ability to have sense perceptions or sensibility, uh, and so he's very critical of any theological view that would make a very hard distinction between substance and accidents, like the traditional doctrine of transubstantiation does. And Hovey makes that point. Um, he goes on then to say that, well, look, the reason that the notion of transubstantiation was introduced, one reason, was to correct a kind of purely experiential view of the sacrament of communion or of the Eucharist, where basically what's important is are simply the perceptions that the priest and the participants have, the perceptions of uh, bread and wine, and that somehow everything is all on the surface. And Hami says, well, look, the problem with that is that uh, really bread and wine, ordinary bread and wine, can only nourish the body, the human body. It's obscure how they could nourish the human soul. And so it's unclear how the entire sacrament uh, could apply the the purely sensor, sensory experiences to the soul. And since the soul is very important, you know, it's supposed to, the Eucharist is supposed to nourish not just the human body, but the human soul. The problem is that when more and more emphasis is placed upon this nourishing of the soul, then the senses sort of get derided, or the sense, the sensory aspect of this gets shunned to one side, or gets ignored, and so that actually what winds up happening in a purely uh, sensory interpretation of the Eucharist is that the senses actually get devalued, even though that initially was the point to make it very important that the perceptions of the people participating in the ritual, their sensory perceptions are crucial. Uh, if the sacrament is really about nourishing the soul primarily and not the body, then it's not clear how bread and wine can nourish the soul, and so that's not really important. Something else must be going on, or we don't really understand it, and the whole sensory house of cards comes tumbling down. That's why, according to Hovey, for at least one reason, the notion of transubstantiation was introduced, so that you kind of have the best of both worlds. On the one hand, you have the sensory experiences of bread and wine, that pertains to the senses, but then the substantial change, the, sub, the change from the substance of bread and wine initially underlying those accidents into the, the substance of Christ's body and blood, that substance is supposed to nourish the soul primarily, whereas the sensory attributes can continue to nourish the body, and so you have the best of both worlds. But remember that Nietzsche rejects that. He rejects any notion of transubstantiation because um, it, it uh, assumes or presupposes this very hard distinction between uh, sensory accidents, accidents or things that can be perceived, like the, the properties of bread and wine, and the imperceptible substance underlying them. Nietzsche thinks that that kind of distinction is bad metaphysics. He throws it out the window, and of course he doesn't have any use for the Eucharist at all, or for the Christian belief in it, um, so he's perfectly content to go with the senses, as we've kind of seen in some of the discussions we've had of his philosophy before. Now, what's the problem here? What is the problem with Hovey's discussion? Well, Hovey is a Christian theologian, and so he thinks that the Eucharist is very, very important. In fact, it is perhaps the cardinal sacrament of the Christian faith, and he agrees with the um, problems, that there are problems with a purely sensory interpretation of the Eucharist. In other words, it can't just be about, you know, the bread and the wine that we perceive. There has to be something more going on there to explain how the human soul gets nourished, not just the human body, through participation in this very uh, important and this crucial ritual. So he agrees with the sensory critique of the Eucharist, but he also notices and, and, uh, and uh, observes that Nietzsche would reject any notion of transubstantiation and any notion that there is an imperceptible substance uh, underlying those sensory attributes or those sensory accidents, initially the substance of bread and wine, and then subsequently after the transubstantiation, the uh, substance of Christ's body and blood, 
He agrees that Nietzsche would reject that. So where are we? Let's ask ourselves then, where, where are we with respect to the Eucharist insofar as how he has discussed it? Um, well, where we are is that we, we can't make any sense out of it. At least if we are drawing upon Nietzsche or we want to bring Nietzsche's philosophy and his philosophical critique into dialogue with Christian theology, in particular with the sacramental theology of the Eucharist, um, what happens is that we, the, the thing doesn't make sense because we can't accept the sensory interpretation. Since we agree with Nietzsche, we can't accept transubstantiation. Well then, how are we making sense of the sacrament as something that nourishes both the human body and also the human soul and brings the human person who participates in the sacrament into direct contact with Christ, which for Hubby is very important. He thinks that the Eucharist is sort of what brings the Christian past and the Christian, Christian present and the Christian future together into this very, very meaningful ritual um, that is absolutely indispensable for Christianity. The problem is that Hovey, by bringing Nietzsche into the picture, and in particular Nietzsche's criticism of transubstantiation, Hovey leaves us without any cogent theological explanation of what is going on in the sacrament of uh, Holy Communion or the Eucharist. Now, what would be necessary here if we were going to make progress and this is something that I would like to talk about more at some other time, on some other occasion, if I have the opportunity to do it, is we need some other theological account of the Eucharist that can accept Nietzsche's criticism of the hard distinction between perceptible accidents and imperceptible substance, and so would have problems with at least the traditional doctrine of transubstantiation, would also be sensitive or sympathetic, or at least understanding uh, of the problems with a purely uh, perceptible interpretation or sensory interpretation of the sacrament of the Eucharist, the kinds of problems that Hovey brings up, but still would cling to the sacrament and say, well, it's important and we can make sense of it. We can make sense out of how it nourishes both the human body and the human soul and brings the human participant into intimate connection with Christ uh, through the sacrament, who is, Christ is being really present somehow in the sacrament. So we would need another theological interpretation, a plausible theology of the sacrament, which Hovey never gives us. What he does, and I have to say in a somewhat irritating manner, is that once he raises this problem in the chapter um, where he's discussing the Eucharist, then he forgets all about it. And he goes on to talk about other things like well, how a community can kind of misrepresent its past, it can sort of uh, be very selective about its past, sort of picking and choosing the things that it likes and trying to forget the things that it doesn't. He goes on to say something about Nietzsche's criticism of Hegel, uh, and in particular uh, Hegel's use about freedom and necessity. All of that may be very, very interesting, but it doesn't have anything to do, nothing whatsoever, to do with the fundamental Eucharistic problems that Hovey himself has brought into the discussion. You know, I didn't bring those problems up. Um, nobody else did. Hovey is the person who brought that issue to the table, and then he just sort of leaves it hanging. Well, not sort of, he definitely leaves it hanging. And to me, that is a very, very unsatisfactory example of theology. It is, in fact, a very, very good example of how not to do theology, that's the kind of thing that we want to avoid. And that's the kind of thing that I am trying to avoid in those of my videos where I am discussing these kinds of issues. So that's what I wanted to talk about this evening. That's all I have to say about that. Um, I don't have anything personally against Hubby. I don't know him, but I didn't think his book was very well written. There are other problems that I have with it, which I may go into at some point should I have the opportunity to, do, to discuss that. But in any event, I think the most important thing here is if we're worried about these kinds of questions, then at some point we need to try to avoid making the mistakes that he's made, and that's something that I hope to do at a later date, again, if I have the chance to do so. So that's all I have to say this evening. Thank you for your patience.
Thank you for listening to me rattle on about these things. Um, but I do find them interesting. I realize that it's a bit eccentric, as I've said before, but I really don't care because I find it interesting and I hope some of you do as well. Uh, so until next time, this is Katya Eckhart wishing, as always, everybody a restful and a peaceful and a safe evening, uh, a good evening, and take care of each other, be good to each other, and I'll see you next time. Thanks again so much for joining me. Have a good night. Bye-bye.